If you're a composer for orchestral music, I highly recommend you stick around. I think this video will be of interest to you. Today, you and I will explore orchestral doublings. Doublings basically just means we take one line in the orchestra and we assign it to multiple players. This gives the effect of having lots of colors available to us, much like mixing paints for a canvas. Now, obviously there's a, an endless amount of colors we could explore in the orchestra. So we're just gonna focus on seven today. And these seven are based on ones that I use very frequently in my own music. So our first texture, we're gonna start from most basic to kind of most unique uh, is gonna be muted brass mixed with pizzicato. Here's what that texture sounds like. Really cool color, it's kind of snappy and punchy, um, and it works particularly well because we have the pluckiness of the strings, which is kind of rounded sounded and short, and we have this kind of stingy, tense, nasally sound in the brass. So you have this contrasted texture that works quite well. Here is the muted brass on their own for comparison. You see it's short, but it lacks kind of the punctuation. And then here's the pizzicato on its own. So it has that punctuation, but it lacks sort of the accenting factor. So together again, really nice color. Now it's commonly also done with pizzicato and woodwinds. This is just kind of a bonus one, but since we're on the subject, works particularly well for very similar reasons, but it's not gonna be quite as snappy sounding. It'll be a little bit more subdued. So here's pizzicato strings and short flutes. One thing to note is when strings get high up in their pizzicato uh, because of the register, it gets a lot shorter sounding so they can't resonate as long. Whereas if you use pizzicato in lower registers, which I recommend, then they tend to be a little bit more resonant. So in fact, maybe flutes and pizzicato strings wouldn't be the best option, but you could certainly use bassoon playing short with lower pizzicato. And that's a very, very common technique that you can use. Sounds like this. Nice punctuation. The next orchestral doubling we're gonna be doing is Celeste and Winds. Now, like Pizzicato, Celeste has a punctuation to it, but it's a lot softer sounding and it also resonates longer. So we can hold it, so. It resonates. Used with winds, we can use winds short or just have them play long. It's really good with flutes in particular. This can be a really, really nice punctuation to them. Very common John Williams technique. Really good. Now this obviously is only gonna work mostly in the high register because we can't really double things like bassoons because it's just too low for the Celeste. Celeste can play a little lower than this, um, but it doesn't sound optimal for the instrument. Works much better in the higher register. Sometimes what people will do is they'll have the Celeste actually double an octave higher uh, than whatever the instrument is that's playing. So we could have Celeste up an octave and we could have flutes down the octave and that will sound like this. And that's kind of a nice color, kind of Christmassy sounding. Now a similar doubling, but a more aggressive side is gonna be using xylophone and trumpets. Kind of similar for the reasons we talked about. You have the percussive accent and we have a little bit of buzz with the trumpets, uh, but it's a lot more percussive and kind of aggressive sounding. So. Again, John Williamsy technique, you could do. Really, really aggressive sounding. And without it, you know, you're gonna lack that percussive element. So just the trumpets on their own uh, will be snappy. The xylophone on its own is gonna have some obviously percussive factor to it, but together they work really well. So you see, we're kind of pairing these like flavors together. Now, if you could imagine a non-pitch percussive instrument that would work well, snare drum is gonna be a good one because it's sitting right in the mid register. Uh, it's gonna match really well. It's gonna be, I won't be able to play this in real time, but if we were to have like a trumpet passage, for example, just playing some sort of a percussive line. So we had them going. Right? What I would typically do is I would actually just grab all this, copy paste it over to the snares, and then I would change all this, maybe just keep the bottom notes and just basically change this to be uh, all C's 
and make it a snare. So now we have. Might have to adjust volumes a little bit. That's the idea. Now we're gonna get into some of the more adventurous textures. I love to use flute and muted trumpets together, particularly in jazz stuff. Alto flute is also a really good one you can do use for this, um, but for this example, we're just gonna use sustains. Flutes in the low register have a really interesting quality to them. They're kind of dark and mysterious. Right, now if we were to use trumpets on their own just to double that, it's just gonna be too, too brassy, too aggressive. But if we use muted trumpets, and in particular, Harmon mutes are really good for this, this kind of sound. You get that old school noir feel. They work quite well together. So that sounds like this. Really nice texture because you have the roundedness of the flutes, but you have the buzz of the trumpets. So again, that contrast kind of works together. The next texture is another flute doubling. I really like doubling flutes, uh, but we're gonna use alto flute this time, which is a much darker sounding flute. It's in the lower register. Doubling that with vibraphone. Again, a kind of jazzy texture that I particularly love. Sounds like this. So you have the flute, which is much darker sounding on its own kind of lacks body a little bit. It's, it's kind of weak sounding. So you don't want something super overpowering, otherwise it would just take it over. But vibraphone is nice because it has the sustain element to it. Um, and it's a little rounded sounding as opposed to like a, a xylophone marimba. Also has a little vibrato to it if you want that turned on, which I like. And so together, they work particularly well. Very mysterious kind of Bernard Hermony. The next texture I am guilty of using and abusing and abusing, <laughs> it's French horn and chimes, orchestral chimes, also known as tubular bells by some people. Great, powerful texture you can use at the climax of your music. It's really nice because those horns, I mean, they got power to them for sure. But for a climax, you want some accents, you know? So chimes help really well to add that. Also, you may notice that some of these doublings are happening in particular, actually I should say all of them, because of our choice of timbre and register. So the register is really important. We can't double this with a xylophone. I mean, we could, but it's just gonna lack that power that we're going for. So you want something that feels powerful in that register. Tubular bells are a great fit for that. You know, timpani is gonna be a little high up, so it doesn't work quite as well. So when you're making these doublings and you're creating your own color combinations, you wanna really, really factor in register. It's one of the most important things when it comes to orchestration. And for our final orchestral texture, I thought I'd come up with something unique to me. And this is something that I think I would use and I think I have used. English horn and muted viola. It sounds like this. So why does this one work? Well, we have English horn, which is very somber in quality. and almost serves like an alto voice or maybe like high tenor, but I would say more like an alto voice. So we need a voice that supports that. We could use violins in this instance, but violins are gonna have a bit more weight to them. And they're also serving more of a soprano role generally when it comes to the orchestra. So if we're thinking of them like a choir. A little too much power and it doesn't feel weak enough. So we use viola because it's a little weaker sounding and the mutes really keep it restrained. If you wanted a little more power, I would suggest potentially cello, as long as you're not moving too high up in the register. So that would sound like this.
But typically, cello gets reserved for bassoon because their registers overlap a little bit more than English horn does. So if we use bassoon in this instance, you'll see that they kind of, they play a little nicer together. So you, again, you wanna pay attention to those registral overlaps, very important in selecting your textures. Now, a really important final note with orchestral doubling is you certainly do not wanna double things all the time. That's a really common error that composers, uh, early composers of orchestral music make is they think, oh, I gotta double, gotta double, what am I gonna double this with? And you know, this works best when you use it sparingly for special effects or as a way to contrast a soloistic texture. Orchestral music, like all music, is all about that contrast, and with that amount of players and colors at your disposal, with great power comes great responsibility, and you have to make sure that you keep yourself restrained when needed. So wield these tools at your pleasure, at your leisure, but with caution and responsibility. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna support me, you can leave a like, subscribe for more, or you can join me on Patreon where I have some bonus content for people who choose to support me there at the $10 level and up. It includes MIDI, as well as some bonus videos, and I also do a monthly Q&A for anybody interested. Thanks as always for watching, I'll see you in the next video.